Hello, I'm Jim Demo with Clark County Close-Up. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. So, just for our viewers to get them caught up, what is the charter review process? This is uh, the first ever um, review of the home rule charter that voters passed in 2014. Um, we, the, the charter called for a first review after five years. And so we were elected in November, 2020, 15 of us to uh, pick up that charter and, and look and see what um, might need to be changed, what should be considered and uh, bring in uh, some of the public uh, comments that we've heard over the last couple of years as to what uh, the community would like to see. Okay, and, and when will you be done meeting? Yeah, so uh, we started uh, in January of this year and we just had our last meeting uh, last night on uh, the 8th of December, uh, where we had our final votes on the resolutions that will be on the ballot. Um, our terms don't expire until the end of this month on uh, the 31st of December, but our official last meeting was last night. Okay. And to clarify, that's the 2022 ballot measures. We, we did have seven on this year's ballot. And that's what was my next question. So in November of this year, voters approved six of seven amendments. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, do all these uh, measures become effective in 2022? Well, it actually have taken effect um, now, as soon as the election was certified. That, that was the um, what was put into each of the resolutions, the effective date. Now, some of them have different triggers, and Kim can, can, can go in a couple of those as well. But uh, for, we now have um, our Elected positions are will be nonpartisan as they will show up on the ballot next year, and we. So, so that would be similar to like the city races are currently nonpartisan. That's correct. Okay. Um, except we'll be showing up. Uh, the county will be showing up in even years, whereas the city races are in odd years. Um, we also have a five district uh, map and a change in configuration of the county council. Uh, and that um, we can talk a little bit more about, and that's in the, uh, there was a five district map approved by voters that currently is being reviewed by a redistricting committee um, in using the 2020 census results, which we did not have available when we put that map together. Mm -hmm. So those those existing councillors right now, they'll finish their term and keep their salary. Uh, but come 2023, all councillors will then have the same salary. Um, the amendment also got rid of the requirement that the chair serve on um, all boards and commissions um, where there's two or more council members. So that's something else for um, that went into effect. Yeah, and the current elected uh, countywide elected chair, that position gets eliminated and is replaced by a fifth district um, and a fifth district representative. So for 2022, we have a transition plan that was also adopted in that amendment. Uh, district one through four counselors will continue to represent those districts that they've been representing. And Eileen Quiring O'Brien will be representing district five until her term is up next year. And will she retain the, the chair through 2022 or does it go to the vote of the county council? It will be up to the county council. They, they do, uh, they are, the main can uh, vote her to be chair again next year, but they will have to make that um, election as along with the appointments to committees and boards uh, at the start of 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after after the Charter Commission put, put the 2021 proposals together, you quickly started work on proposals for the 2022 ballot. Um, why did you take that action and um, where are we in the process of finally finalizing those proposals? Yeah, and I just wanted to back up real quick um, and state um, something else that's going to affect um, is that by July 31st of next year, a code of ethics must be adopted by the council, as well mm -hmm. as the establishment of an ethics review process um, that includes the, the commission and the office, as well as a complaint hotline. Um, so I just wanted to include that one in there, in there too. Um, and that will but, be an independent and uh, autonomous ethics review process. It will not be under within the county council anymore. It will be a separate entity. And then the 
other last change uh, that is already in effect is Charter Review Commission. Our commission will now be meeting every five years uh, with a mm -hmm. two-year term. Uh, currently, it was every five and then every 10 with a one-year term. So that is also in effect right now. Um, uh, yeah, on to your next question. Yes. Um, so we, we started working very quickly on the proposals for the 2022 ballot because there were so many items of priority uh, that the commission wanted to tackle. So we decided to focus on the ones that we were ready to jump into right away um, that we felt were most crucial to put on the ballot uh, this year, uh, knowing that we would have time to work on anything that could potentially be on the next uh, year's ballot. And this way voters didn't have uh, so many things to look at and research and vote on. Um, and so last night, you know, we approved uh, those 2022 amendment proposals that folks will see on that ballot. So how many did we end up will be on the 2022 ballot? There'll be six um, on 2022. We can go through those um, in order. I, I just want to also uh, supplement what Kim said is that you, we had nine amendments on the 2021 ballot. You know, county council also put two on by themselves. We were looking early on that we didn't want to make that ballot a very long ballot with lots of amendments. So mm -hmm. um, the 2021, where we decided were the priority for then, uh, we held over um, some of these, and, and that's this makes up the six that we put on uh, for 2022. So from my, I watched your town hall, one of your town hall meetings, and one of the proposals that I think will draw a lot of, of, of discussion um, has to do with ranked choice voting. Can you explain that proposal? Yeah, so what this would do uh, would to amend the charter so that county races would be ranked uh, in what's called a ranked choice voting process. So it's where you can rank candidates on your ballot by your preference. So first your first choice, then your second choice, third choice, and so on. That way, if your favorite candidate doesn't win, your vote still counts towards your next choice. Um, so how this all kind of works is that all the first choice votes are counted. If one of those candidates gets more than half of the votes, they then win, just like in any other election. However, if that candidate doesn't get more than half of the votes uh, from those first choice votes, the candidate with the fewest votes is then eliminated. And if you had voted for that eliminated candidate, then your ballot, then your, your vote then goes towards your next choice. And that elimination continues until there's a candidate that has a majority. Um, this is a way for um, your vote to always count. So, you know, for all the candidates that you like the most that has a chance at winning, um, it's a way to get, you know, uh, voters to feel like their vote counts. Um, and additionally, this would eliminate the need of a primary. In fact, we, we got to use ranked choice voting twice yeah. to fill vacancies on the Charter Review Commission. So, so just to clarify, so there will be no primary election for the county races. It'll just be on the general election. Interesting. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is a big change. Um, and ha has this pr proposal been reviewed by the, the county elections department already? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the subcommittee that worked on the ranked choice voting, uh, we worked in close partnership with Greg Kimsey um, and the elections office to make sure that this to um, go back and forth about how could, this could work, um, things that, you know, we might have not known would be an issue so that we could work around those things. Uh, for example, uh, we decided that uh, in the proposal that an implementation date would be 2026. Originally, we had wanted 2024, um, but per the request of Greg Kimsey and the elections office, 2026 would be better because then it wouldn't fall on an election, uh, I'm sorry, a presidential election um, where the department's already very busy. <laughs> so this would give a little bit more time and do it on um, more of an off year for them. No, that makes we, sense. Did that. Invite Greg, we did invite Greg Kimsey to come to one of our meetings in October so the full commission could uh, have a Q&A with him. Yep. Okay. So, so again, if it is passed by voters next year, it wouldn't actually uh, take effect until the 2026 election. So there yep. would be time to get people used to the idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Absolutely. okay. So now let's discuss, you have five additional proposals. Could you go through those, please? 
Sure. Uh, and I'm trying to remember the order that we, uh, the next one was um, the, we call it the county manager um, uh, vacancy consultation amendment. Um, we're trying to come up with a better name for that, but that's what it is. Essentially, that would be where um, county manager is positions vacant and the county council will need to appoint somebody. This uh, adds a requirement that the county council have an open public meeting where they consult with the executive elected um, officials, that's the auditor, assessor, clerk, et cetera, uh, before they make that appointment. So it, it does kind of uh, make a more formal step in the process before they appoint the county manager. Okay. Um, so what's the next one, preamble? Yep. Uh, so the next one is the what we uh, resolution 2021-10, uh, which is our charter preamble uh, pro amendment proposal. And this amendment would add an acknowledgement uh, to the indigenous peoples that were here before uh, before Clark County was established, and also acknowledge the rich diversity in history. Um, that's very expansive here in Clark County. Uh, we're very fortunate to have such an expansive history and diversity here. Um, but also, uh, it would add a preamble to the charter. That's kind of similar to how you know our federal constitution and other government uh, governing documents have a sort of preamble statement that outlines the values um, of the charter and it, a statement of its purpose. Um, so we thought this would uh, be something to propose to the voters to decide on whether or not to include this. Okay. And Chuck, you can you can do the next two. I'll do the next one. Uh, next one is. Uh, the uh, uh, vacancy, um, how to appoint or fill a vacancy uh, because of the conversion to nonpartisan uh, positions in all the elected offices, there is no vacancy provision for that in the charter. And so what this does is uh, two steps. One is it would require the county executive elected positions, each one of those who are elected uh, to appoint a deputy. and um, in which case, if they were to leave that position, the elected representative, then their deputy would be go would go to the county council to be confirmed to be the, the interim um, executive elect executive position until the next election, and then the county council uh, vacancies would be filled uh, through a process the county council would choose. Uh, we, probably similar to how the city councils do it now, uh, which is to put a call out for um, people to apply and then they would they would choose the process to appoint that vacancy. Okay. Uh, did I leave anything out with that, Kim? Look, sounds good to me. The um, two measures affected the initiative referendum. One was more of a clarification of the process. The other um, and these were both by the county council changed um, initiatives and referenda for those in the unincorporated area and ordinances there. This one would take up from those, uh, since those are now part of the charter, and it would change the percentage of signatures required uh, to put something on the ballot from 10% of the voters from the last governor election to eight. Um, it would also place a time limit on many initiatives, uh, similar to a time limit to gather signatures for initiatives and referendum. It also would give uh, people who start out with an, an initiative and then find that they don't collect enough signatures, they have the ability to change into a mini initiative, which would then put a measure in front of the county council. Okay. And then, and then the, the final amendment um, was is our uh, diversity and inclusion amendment proposal. Uh, this, uh, when amendment six failed uh, this last go around, uh, commissioners solicited a lot of feedback and made revision to the to that amendment with that feedback. Uh, so this amendment would instead it would only create. Uh, a director of diversity and inclusion under the county manager's office and also create an advisory commission with a representative from every district in the county that reflects the expansive diversity we have here. And this includes, but isn't limited uh, to gender, ethnicity, as well as those living with disabilities here in Clark County. Okay, and then all of these will be on the 2023 general election ballot. 2022. 22. Well, I'm sorry, I'm skipping ahead. 2022. Thank you. 2022 ballot. 
now, as we discussed, the new charter uh, commission will be elected within with around five years from now. Can you discuss some of the, uh, are you kind of compiling notes on challenges you face and, and gonna be able to pass this information along? It, it, we are. Um, what we found when we first took office is there was not a lot of, we had nobody leaving us notes in a path to, how do you do charter review? So we're going to leave that for the next commission, as well as some of our considerations that didn't make it onto the ballot this time, uh, but were seriously considered, and also some lessons learned that we gathered through the process so they can have a uh, a process that will run smoothly once they take office. Great. So if people want more information about the Charter Commission, uh, I'm assuming the website will still be up um, at clark.wa.gov backslash county hyphen manager backslash charter review commission overview. Yes. And we'll have um, frequently asked questions put up for the 2022 measures. Um, we also will still have information for our 2021 measures up there, as well as our the entire meeting um, summary, our meeting agendas, meeting minutes, and any other information that they want to have. Well, thank you both for all the, the, the work you've done. And for people who haven't followed the process, we were involved because we were covering these meetings, but there were so many additional meetings that took place. So just thank you for your service for the community. Thank you. It was a privilege and an honor. Um, yeah. Glad to have done it. Absolutely.